This is the Plant Yourself Podcast. I'm Howard Jacobson of plantyourself.com and the Big Change Program with Josh Lajani. This podcast is part of my mission to help you live a wild and well-designed life. A couple of announcements before we get to today's episode. First of all, you can download the Cheat Day Blues, the report that I wrote about why I think cheat days are a terrible idea and what we can do instead if we if we don't want to give up on things altogether but we don't want to like have this day once a week or once a month that we're constantly obsessing about that totally resets all the progress we've made towards our, our taste buds adapting terrible idea so instead we can do these other strategies that i outline pretty clearly i believe in the cheat day blues report And you can get that, and when you sign up for that, you also get a gift subscription to the Big Change Bulldog, my weekly-ish newsletter from Plant Yourself. And here's how you go get the Cheat Day Blues. Just go to plantyourself.com slash cheat day, C-H-E-A-T-D-A-Y, all lowercase. Second thing, I mentioned this last week and in a recent newsletter, Josh and I are looking for organizations that are committed, are serious, they're not playing, they're not uh, committed to improving the health of their employees, specifically preventing and reversing chronic disease like hypertension, diabetes, obesity, cancer, stroke, heart attack, all that stuff. And there's a lot of companies out there that are, you know, they have wellness programs, you know, you can get points for going to the gym or for taking the stairs instead of the elevator. We're not talking about these little rinky-dink improvements. We're talking about big change, bringing big change to the organizations, big big change to the employees in how they think about their health. And we're looking for a few companies to let us come and talk and and see if it's going to be a good fit. We've partnered with uh, WellStart Health and, you know, the big change program some of the participants have gotten amazing results, life-changing results. And with WellStart Health, which is the digital re- disease reversal platform, including telemedicine, we're looking to expand and really bring this message of plant-based nutrition, of, of real physical movement, of mindset improvement to the world. And any company that wants to, to bring us in, or, or a school, or a union, or any organization, um, it's not just going to affect the health, but it will really change kind of the mindset. This is going to be folks who can resist temptation, who can focus, who have the skills and the fundamentals of health to be really stellar employees, managers, leaders, and so on. So if you're interested, you want to have a conversation, just reach out to me, hj at plantyourself.com. All right, so let's talk about today's episode. My guests are Dave Evans and Bill Burnett. They are the authors of a book that I would hold up and show you right now if you're you're watching this on YouTube, but I don't have it because it's so good I lent it to my daughter uh, even though I needed it for this episode because I wanted her to to read it so she could uh, take advantage of the the exercises and, and have a beautifully designed life herself. But the book is called Designing Your Life, And it's all about applying the same principles of design that produce the beautiful products that are made by Apple and a lot of other, you know, design-centric companies, whether it's design of physical products or design of systems or design of websites. You know, the beautiful design in the world around us is not an accident. And it comes largely out of a school of design thinking that was popularized in the United States by Bernie Roth, who has been a guest on this podcast and is the mentor to my two guests today, Dave and Bill. And basically, it's about applying design thinking to life challenges, to life problems, to looking at our problems as kind of juicy, as opportunities to apply this thinking and to lead stellar lives. That we, you know, If we had a life without problems, it would end up being pretty boring and unsatisfying. It's actually the problems that give us the juice to think bigger, to create things we didn't think we could create, to grow into potential we didn't realize we have. And so I wanted to have these guys on the show for a couple of reasons. One is 
because design thinking can help us as we're trying to design our healthy lifestyles, our healthy diets, as we're trying to shift if we feel stuck in one way of being and we want to move into another way. But another thing, actually this is more profound, is many, many, many people in the big change program, after they get their health under control, they start looking around at their lives and saying, you know what, now I realize that I want more. I realize I've been settling. I realize I'm in a job I don't like. I'm in a place I don't like. I might be in a family constellation that's been stifling me. Now that I've gotten my health under control, now that I've taken care of myself from the inside, I want to start changing my externals, changing my environment, changing the challenges in my life. And so for, for folks who are already far along on your health journeys, the designing your life principles can come in really, really handy as we look and say, well, what's next? What's the biggest thing I can do with my life right now? So it's a great conversation with Bill and Dave. I'm happy that Skype worked so well, and I'm happy that I can present it to you both in audio format if you're listening on the podcast, or if you go to plantyourself.com slash 243, you can actually watch the video of this as well. So without further ado, Bill Burnett, welcome to the Plant Yourself podcast. So I know we, we may be joined by your, your writing partner, uh, Dave Evans. I'm not sure if that's going to happen at this point, but we'll, we'll hold open the possibility. So if, if he jumps on, people won't be surprised in the, in the middle of the broadcast. Um, and the reason we're talking is you guys have written this book that I have just fallen in love with, um, which is called Designing Your Life. I keep wanting to say it's called You Are Here, because the first thing I always do is take off the dust jacket <laughs> And it says, you, you are here with a big arrow uh, right, right on the front. And I heard you guys on my friend Peter Bregman's podcast. And with, you know, he's got a business-related leadership podcast. And you guys were talking about life design and career design. And the more I listened, the more excited I got about the idea of applying these principles to designing your own health, wellness, um, well-being, as opposed to, you know, the, the the wider topic. Um, so I'm so first of all, I'm, I'm hoping that we can accomplish that today. Uh. Right. Right. And, and this, but the second thing that happened was that I kind of did a bait and switch on myself. And I kind of want to talk about the the whole, you know, designing the life and, and going beyond the health, just just because so many of the people that I've worked with, and I feel like, you know, there's there's certain people that you work with, you feel like, like, I, you really nailed it with them, and they got it, and they took it, and they ran with it, and they made it their own. And for me, those people in the health domain are now bumping up against they want a better life. They they may, you know, all of a sudden when they're they're happier, they have more energy, they're clearer, they're fitter, they're sexier, all of a sudden those other aspects of their life um are are no longer a match and they want to upgrade those as well. So I would love to 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 explore all of that with you. Um so um the, the, the first thing you, you say that just, um, I just wanted to cuddle the book, was that you said a well-designed life is generative, creative, always evolving, and, and the word that jumped out at me was surprise. So why, why is that important? Why, why did you decide to begin with, with, with that kind of framing?
gotcha. Looks like looks like Dave's ready to join us. There he is. Hey Dave, how you doing? Cool. So we uh, we, we we just started, and um, Bill Bill was was helping explain why he began with this idea of curiosity and and sort of wonder and delight and surprise. Um, so, okay. Um, do you really think curiosity helps you get good at being lucky? And it's, the word lucky is so interesting to me because, you know, we have examples of people who have, especially in my domain, in the health domain, who have transformed themselves, who have, you know, become avatars of health and, and wellness. And, and other people who haven't made that journey yet look at them and say, oh, they're just lucky. You know, they, they or they have something I don't have or they have some genetic gift or some opportunity I didn't get. What's the connection between curiosity and lucky? Huh. Wow, that's that's a that's a beautifully elegant and profound study. I love that.
So um, I just wrote down the que next question to ask is about empathy for yourself, because now if we're, if we're talking about people who are trying to design their way from, you know, obesity to fitness, from disease to health, uh, often, you know, after a lifetime of watching yourself binge and, and sit on the couch, it's really hard for people to have empathy for themselves and, and their curiosity is kind of shut down by judgment. How do you how do you get people to to begin to loosen that up. Great. And that, that brings us to, so you have your five mindsets and the first one is be curious and, you know, or curiosity. And the second one bias uh, for, to action or try stuff. And this is where I see so many people get hung up around, you know, I've, 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 um, I've written books on health and nutrition and science. And, you know, it, it kind of worries me at this point when people read the whole thing, like, cause then after they finish that one, then they'll want four more. And then they'll email me and they say, yeah, but I just read this other study that seems to contradict your study. Or someone will say, well, I, I, you know, I want to start running, but which watch should I get? Or what kind of inserts in my sneakers? And the one thing people are not willing to do is do something. Um, so what, you know, what's, what's the, just hit us over the head with the benefits of, of actually, you, you say bu building is thinking, of actually doing something.
Yeah. Well, it's right. well. It's, I, I mean, I think for a lot of people, the the primary, the meta refrain is to stop being their own prosecutor, right? So, so if if you're your own prosecutor because you kind of think that that's the only way you're going to motivate yourself, then you're going to look at the six things you tried that that weren't ultimately satisfying or successful as proof of failure, as opposed to proof of your flexibility and your willingness and your your commitment
You mean your yeah. your your middle school aptitude test bill didn't didn't have laptop hinges on it? Yeah. Well, and, I, and I, I think one of the one of the problems that people have in embracing this is like what I guess I'll cause like a call it causation bias that some somehow when we look at it in retrospect or, you know, so my um, my teaching and business partner um, in the program that we run around helping people get fit uh, went from being 420 pounds to being a, a, a competitive ultra athlete. And there's a certain inevitability to each step, like when you tell it as in a narrative, but like when he was going through it, he had no idea. Like he got on the weight machine because he saw an article and he started, he started walking outside because the, the motor on the weight machine would, would burn out because he was too heavy. Like, every, you know, everything was an accident, but people have a really hard time believing that he didn't have a master plan.
Right. Right. And there's a difference, though, between not having a plan and not working your whatever your current plan is hard, because I, I can hear people I can I can hear people listening to this and saying, OK, cool, because now I don't need a plan. I don't have to get up and run. I don't have to go and have broccoli and brown rice for lunch. But you still have to do the work in front of you. Wow, that's that's really really helpful. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just being speechless for a second, which, uh, which 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 I'm allowed to do thanks to the miracle of uh, editing. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. He, he, he was he was on the podcast a couple months ago. He's amazing. Well, he, he can and you can, too. I just I just now now's when I make a note in, in, in my notes to put this as an explicit episode.
So I just remembered why why I went silent there because there was a thought that was you know like a cork and it just it just popped, which is <clears throat> that um, the, the the basis of the work that I do is is basically looking at sort of na natural human environments and natural human behaviors. Like what are we basically evolved or designed to do? So around food, there's you know there's there's processed food and then there's more natural foods and what are the quantities? Around motion, you know, were we meant to sit in the gym and isolate biceps, or were we meant to walk and run and climb? And it occurs to me that when you're talking about, um, you know, be, having target-rich environments, that's what what triggered this idea. Like, we evolved to to walk around and hunt and gather in environments in which there were patterns that we absolutely had to pay attention to and learn from. And if we just, you know, if if we weren't prepared for serendipity we would starve if we weren't prepared for oh there's a you know there's a better food source or it looks like a storm is coming in if if we if we just put our heads down and we we aren't aware of all these environmental inputs which i guess would come out as sort of <clears throat> excuse me as sort of gut feelings as opposed to computer output um you know there's this naturally attainable quantity of uh, of serendipity that is it, we have to pay attention to if we want to live in reality. <laughs> All right. And one of, one of the things I think you guys have done in the book, although I, I, I didn't see it explicitly, is you've kind of taken all the emotional juice out of the word problem, right? So, so like when, I, when, I, when, when my friends and I talk about our problems, you know, our blood pressure goes up, the veins in our neck stand out. And you're, you're speaking of a problem in a much more technical, impersonal way. Like this, there was no ego in the book, it felt like, it, in a sense, the book is like this, um, you know, this medical procedure to kind of like drain a cyst or something, to kind of drain the ego and the personal out of, you know, out of all this stuff that I have so much juice about. Like, if I don't, what if I don't run this marathon under four hours? What will that mean? You know, could you, could you talk a little bit of maybe about like wh whether you sort of intentionally sort of drained Im Im negative emotion out of the whole process?
You, you know, you guys just answered these two problems, or these, these two obstacles that people come to me with all the time that I have until now really regarded as kind of deep psychological issues to be like really kind of get entangled with. And I think your, your top level solution kind of gets to them. Let me throw them to you and see, see if you agree. One is you mentioned like, is that my mom's voice, you know, sending me to medical school? There's a lot of people that I work with that once they start taking care of themselves, they go through this existential crisis and they realize that they have never in their life done anything for other than someone else's approval. And they have no idea who they are or what they want or what they want to be. And so it's like it's almost like that part of them is still a baby. It was never allowed to grow up. And when they get to that that um, that gap, it's terrifying. It's like, okay, like I've, maybe I've been depressed for all these years, but at least I was depressed because I was following a plan. Now I've let go of everything and I have no idea who I am or where to go or what I want to do. And it, it felt like reading your book that you just had, okay, cool, that's where you are. Now take these, you know, be curious, take little steps, and you don't, you don't have to get it right. Right. And, and, and he could have had a lot of ego wrapped up in that. And he might have. Right. And I think, and I think he's, he's incorporated that into like, you know, living the questions as, as opposed to living the answers.
Yeah. <clears throat> Great. Thing two is, is the thing that stops people is they will make a commitment to get healthy. So, you know, okay, I'm only going to eat uh, whole food plant-based. And they do it for three days. And then on day four, they cave and they have a cheeseburger. And they have all this disappointment that it didn't work. All right. And it becomes another notch on their belt of failure and another, you know, another bit of proof that nothing's going to work. And, you know, I said, as I said, that's that's something that just stops people. They'll 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 sabotage themselves right up front and they'll frame it as a, a deal breaker. Um, and I think, you know, your, your concept of, you know, don't overcommit. Try a bunch of things you know, instead, like sort of your your you, you mentioned this in terms of the uh, the job search where you're exploring offers as opposed to looking for a job. The same thing, the same can be true for I'm I'm approaching, um, you know, approaches and strategies for getting healthy as opposed to finding the one thing that's going to definitely guarantee me success.
And you know, one, one of the things that I love and I'm absolutely going to steal, of course, give you credit for, is the failure reframe exercise. Um, because, you know, so one, one of the, one of the um, things we do, um, my business partner, Josh, and I, he, he started a group called the Missing Chins Run Club. It's a, it's a secret Facebook group for, um, you know, ex, ex-country backslapping, beer drinking, country boy fat guys who are in the process of getting into shape. And I, I don't know if you saw, they, they were on uh, 60 Minutes last week, a seven, uh, not 60 Minutes, they were on Good Morning America for a, for a seven minute segment. It was beautiful. And so I'm, I'm part of this secret Facebook group, even though I've, um, you know, I haven't had the privilege of losing over 100 pounds myself. And what I see is like the whole, a whole bunch of new people have come on because of the, uh, the, the publicity. And so they're, they're sort of getting onboarded in a very organic way by the existing members. And so they'll, they'll say, like, they'll tell their story and then they'll say, OK, this week I'm going to do this. And the existing members jump on to comment and say, like, don't tell us what you're going to do. Show us what you just did. Like, show us your Strava run. Show us what you're, you know, do your, your, take a picture of your watch after going for a walk. And they, they're very resistant to post their first run or their first ride. So a guy just posted today, 1.6 miles in 30 minutes. And he's, he's ashamed to post that because he perceives he's going to be judged by all these athletes. And that's like exactly what they're telling him to do. Completely. What, whatever the whatever the thing is you've done, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, right. Five, yeah, 500 steps equals a Snickers bar, right? Right, right. And we, and one thing we, you know, we talk about, and I think this is, this is uh, a page from, from your book, is like, what's the problem you're solving for? If the problem is I'm trying to lose weight, that's not a very interesting problem. And it's and when you solve it, you're not happier. So we, we, we look at, you know, we really look at like, what, you're, what do you want your life to be like? What do you want to be able to do? And so instead of looking at weight loss and diet, we look at performance and say, OK, so now all the stuff that we're going to focus on is, is uh, instrumental. It's not it's not the goal. Um, um, God, there's so much more to talk about, and we're almost out of time. Um, just a little quickly look through what I definitely want to get out of you guys. Um, let's talk about the failure reframe exercise, because I think it is going to be so valuable for people, and, and not everyone pays me to help them. So let's get this out into, the, into podcast land, as you say. What, what, what is it, and, and how, how do you use it?
Right. Yeah. Right. And, and at the same time, like when people are down on themselves or depressed or they look at themselves in the mirror and they're disgusted and, you know, self-critical, like these, the, the people who are, are the most frustrated are the people who are really successful in, in the other domains of their life. Like they can't figure out like, what's wrong with me? I've got a good job. I'm a professor. I've, uh, I've made a lot of money. And, and like in that idea of, you know, I guess, appreciative inquiry or looking for the bright spots of like, what am I really good at? Like, there's, it's almost like there's this firewall that they are, they're unable to bring all of their strategies that they use to be to, you know, to not blow their, their money, and, you know, in an investment or in a startup, they, they can, they can do that, but they can't, they can't figure out how to apply it to to health. And I think, you know, all of us have so many strengths that we simply, um, you know, we're, we're used to them or we ignore them or they, we, we, we undervalue them because they just seem much less interesting than, than all our foibles. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Right. And I'm guessing that the questions start with why can't I are not like favorite design questions. Yeah. Right. Ah, so you could you could change your tone and uh, change your life. Mm, I love that, that, that just with the tone of your voice, you changed from judgment to curiosity, and it changed everything.
Right. I love that. Well, this has been so amazing to to talk to you guys to, to to get your spirit and your your humor and your wisdom. I just want to just want to say I was as I was reading in the introduction, you had you know a bunch of questions that the book will help you answer, and one of them was um, how can I be thin, sexy, and fabulously rich? And you said we can help you answer all these questions except the last one. So <clears throat> I want to say I want to say that you've you you've you've now um, helped with at least two thirds of those. <laughs> so um yeah so the book again is called designing your life bill burnett and dave evans um what an honor and a pleasure to have you sharing with us on podcast land today okay. take care if you enjoyed this episode of the plant yourself podcast and you'd like to support our mission please subscribe and leave a review on itunes like this five-star one left by listener Michael Miller from the U.S. on November 23rd, titled One of the Very Best. Michael writes, Howard is a masterful interviewer with consistently interesting guests and topics. The podcast keeps me on track as I recover from an iatrogenic condition and do my best to drop out of the medical system. Iatrogenic, 50-cent word meaning caused by doctors. So, Michael, best wishes on your continued recovery, and thanks for your generous review of this podcast. For more information about the Big Change Program, led by me and Josh Lajani, we're starting up a new one in January 2018. Visit BigChangeProgram.com, and be sure to check out the show notes for today's episode with links to Dave and Bill's book and other stuff at PlantYourself.com slash 243. In garden news, the first of the three big compost bins is built. I got an idea from Geo, the same Geo who fixed my boom mic here, um, to that I turned around and used straw bales instead of building extra walls. So when the straw bales end up degrading, guess what? They go right into the compost. So now we're filling it up with brush. If anyone has a spare BCS chipper shredder that they're not using and they would like to donate to the farm, let me know. Otherwise, we'll just uh, wait until there's enough money in the bank account to spend the 1500 bucks to get it ourselves. In running news, um, back on the Galloway plan, and not going as fast as I'd like, but putting in the miles. And this weekend, I've got a uh, four one-mile sprints, so that should be fun in the nice cold of uh, Durham, North Carolina. And I'll let you know how that goes. It's thanks time. Thanks to Will Ridenauer, of course, for letting me use his beautiful song, Sabali Don. Can you hear it now? Coming up, swelling. And, of course, thanks to all of you podcast patrons. Got a couple of new ones today that I have not yet got permission to share your names. But uh, when I hear back, I'll, I'll add you for next time. But here's the roster. Kim Harrison, Lynn McClellan, Anthony Disson, Brittany Porter, Dominic Mara, Barbara Whitney, Tammy Black, Amy Good, Amanda Hatherley, Mary Jean Wheeler, Ellen Kennelly, Melissa Cobb, Rachel Burns, Christine Nielsen, Tina Sharp, Tina Aheron, Jen Volkanovsky, David Bizek, The Mysterious, Michelle X, Elspeth Feldman, Victoria Dolomanova, Leah Stroller, Alan Christensen, Colleen Peck, Michelle Andrew, Josina, Julianne Rollins, Stu Dolnick, Sarah Durkis, Rhyme of Circus, Kelly Cameron, Wayne Pedersen, Leanne Peterson, Janet Selby, Claire Adams, Tom Franzik, Jeanette Benham, Gil, Sarah David Donahue, Blair Seibert, Dorona Vizo, Gio, and Carolyn Argentati, Jody Friesner, Ruth Ann Thunderbrook, Misha Rosen, Michael Warabat. <gasps> The equally mysterious Tracy Z, Alicia Lemus, Rebecca Hughes, Val Lineman, Rhymes with Cinnamon, Nick Harper, Stephanie Hollins, Martha Bergner, Nicole Ramsey, Susan Ahmad, Molly Levini, Inscrutable Harry R, Susan Laverty, The Panda Vegan, Craig Kovic, Adam Sharp, Karen Burry, Heather Morgan, Ashley Corker, and Kelly Michia, Deanne Norton, Bonnie Lynch of Plan Happy Oregon, Sabine Kurtzels, Nigel Davies, Marion Lum, Teresa Copel, Shell Rutledge, Jill Watt, Julian Watkins, Breed O'Connell, Brian Sheridan, Shannon Hirschman, Kate Rose, Linda Ayat, Julie Lang, Holm, Edegard, Isa Tuzin, Watt, Colleen, Connie Hainline, Aaron Greer, Alicia. So close. Alicia Davis and Aviva Lael for your generous support of the podcast. That's it for this week. As always, be well. <laughs>